Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining today's webinar, the Motherhood Center's Day Program in the Time of Social Distancing. My name is Paige Bellenbaum, and I'm the founding director of the Motherhood Center, and I just wanted to go over a few ground rules for today's webinar. Please keep your sound muted for the entirety of the webinar. If you happen to have a question for one of the speakers, please type it into the chat function uh, and we'll get to it as soon as there's a break or an opportunity. We'll also allow for questions at the end of the presentation. And this webinar will be available on our website by the end of this week in the event that you would like to review it again or if you'd like to share it with other people who might find it beneficial. Just wanted to say a few words about the Motherhood Center, and you are all gonna hear much more about it in the presentation today. But due to the current circumstances with coronavirus, we have brought all of our offerings online virtually. So our outpatient treatment, our day program, which we'll hear more about, webinars, support groups, we're really trying to listen to the needs of our community and make sure that we're meeting you all um, in the way that feels most supportive and helpful uh, as we all try to navigate this time, especially as a new or expecting mother or parent. So I'm gonna introduce you to our speakers for today. Uh, first, we have Dr. Laura Polonia. She is co-leading the day program at the Motherhood Center. Dr. Polonia is an adult psychiatrist who's experienced working in a variety of mental health settings and specialized experience working with women through all stages of their reproductive lives. Dr. Polonia received her medical degree at Cornell University and received postgraduate clinical training at NYU as an OBGYN intern, general psychiatry resident, and consultation liaison fellow. As a psychiatrist with training in OBGYN and consultation liaison psychiatry, Dr. Polonia is especially adept at helping women navigate their mental wellness during the perinatal period. She's worked in a multiple outpatient settings affiliated with the major medical centers in New York City, as well as in private practice. She's experienced clinical lecture and has authored numerous publications to help advance our understanding of psychiatric diagnosis and treatment. She believes a collaborative and trusting environment is the best way to support women whose health and happiness have far-reaching impacts on the communities around them. We are also joined by Meredith Carlisle. She is co-leading the day program at the Motherhood Center with Laura. She's a licensed clinical social worker with a master's degree from Columbia University School of Social Work. Meredith trained in trauma-informed cognitive behavioral therapy and dialectical behavioral therapy and is practiced in residential day treatment and outpatient settings. In the aftermath of the Sandy Hook tragedy, Meredith provided volunteer mental health services at Newtown Youth and Family Services Incorporated in Connecticut. Meredith earned her Bachelor's of Arts from Ithaca College. She is a member of the National Association of Social Workers, Postpartum Support International, and Zero to Three. Without further ado, I'm gonna turn this over to Dr. Polonia and Meredith. Thank you so much for being a part of this webinar today, both of you. Thank you for the kind introduction um, and welcome everyone. Hi, thanks everybody for joining us. So we thought this would be a really lovely opportunity to share with uh, the public a bit about our offerings. Um, we have had the opportunity to uh, take our program from brick and mortar into a virtual space completely. Um, thankfully, we had um, a little bit of time, albeit, you know, it was kind of a, an overwhelming time for us all uh, to develop a, uh, a program uh, that that took us into the virtual setting um, by, uh, but was based and um, continued the supportive environment that we're able to provide at the Motherhood Center. Obviously, um, it's a little bit different in the virtual setting because uh, we're not on site, but with uh, some patients on behalf of the, pa of, of the existing cohort of patients, um, and kind of really a lot of us throwing our hats in the ring and being flexible, we have been able to maintain and help women uh, to achieve wellness in the postpartum period and hope to continue to do so. So we're excited to share that, um, our offerings with you and um, just talk a little bit about PMADS in the postpartum period, um, PMADS being postpartum mood and anxiety symptoms. 
Um, so first I'd like to share a little bit about our mission. Uh, what we do at the Motherhood Center is that we aim to effectively diagnose and treat women suffering from PMADs, um, perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, um, also known as postpartum depression, anxiety. Uh, we also treat um, other diagnoses um, such as bipolar disorder um, and help women transition um, um, kind of into more independent, uh, in, in independent motherhood. Perinatal mood and anxiety disorders are a group of illnesses that affects about uh, 15 to 20% of women in the postpartum period. They uh, are a leading cause of morbidity and mortality in the postpartum period. Um, and they, are, they cause emotional and physical problems that really make it hard for women to function adequately um, in terms of the postpartum period, which is a, a time of big shifting for all of us um, or all new moms. Um, but it, it, uh, it makes it harder for them to take care of themselves, their babies, their families. Um, they do include, as I said, uh, perinatal depression, anxiety, um, OCD, PTSD, and psychosis. Um, these are all uh, quite, quite different etiologically, um, but contribute to a picture of taking a very big shift in a woman's identity and a time of shift to something that feels kind of untenable. And so that's really where we focus our treatment. About, as I said before, about one in five women will experience a, pre, a PMAD in the perinatal period. One thing that we we're reflecting on today um, in our group discussion, in the staff discussion, was that we, we have a sense that, that that is higher in general than, um, than we really get a feel for, or at least what the statistics show, um, because a lot of women really do not seek help. Um, and I think certainly what we're seeing in the setting of this pandemic is that, you know, parenthood, early parenthood is really an isolating time for most women. Um, and that that paired with the sense of stress and anxiety that accompanies what is happening in the world in terms of COVID and social distancing really leaves women feeling quite unsupported and, and um, is an additional risk factor for developing a PMAD. And so I do think that we are seeing and will continue to see a surge in diagnosis and, and um, and more, an even higher percentage of women um, who are new mothers who deal with a perinatal mood or anxiety disorder. As I said about uh, many women go undiagnosed or untreated due to stigma, lack of awareness, and scarcity of treatment options, about 80% of women. And uh, low-income women are especially at risk of developing a PMAD um, in the postnatal period with an estimate of about 40%. Um, the thing that is a little bit gets a little bit less airtime is that we call them P PMADs because they're really not um, they're really not circumscribed to the postnatal period. Uh, in about fifty percent of cases, symptoms really do start to surge in pregnancy, um, particularly in the third trimester. And so, one of the things that we offer at the Motherhood Center is that we we really try to include all of motherhood, burgeoning motherhood, as well as established and and, um, and, uh, and post-birth motherhood. And so um, a, a significant proportion of the women who come to our program are actually pregnant or expecting. Uh, PMADs are the number one complication associated with childbirth in, in, the, first, in the first year postpartum. And um, PMADs really can have a large impact not only on the mother and her functioning, but on the mother-baby attachment and hence the development of children. Um, kids who are born to women who, have, who are struggling with PMADs um, have a higher rate of anxiety and attentional and behavioral disorders as children. And we believe that treatment really helps mitigate some of, these, some of this risk. Um, they're the number two reason for maternal mortality in the US, which is, um, which is a really scary number, you know, to a uh, number two reason for women dying in the, in the postnatal period um, is really quite staggering. Um, in severe cases, untreated PMADs can lead to suicide or infanticide. Um, it, thankfully, this is a very small segment of the women um, who will struggle with the PMAD. Uh, however, it is devastating, obviously, and it's something that we work really, really hard to. Um, to mitigate. 
So there are risk factors, as I said, um, in addition to a time of increased isolation that we're all dealing with a history of mental illness, either personal or familial, um, puts women at increased risk of developing a PMAD. Um, certainly women who have had histories of prior PMADs are at higher risk. Women who have had history of, um, uh, of premenstrual dysphoria or strong PMS symptoms also are at, at elevated risk um, of developing a PMAD in response to uh, to pregnancy and delivery. Um, stressful life events and circumstances such as um, unstable relationships, physical or intimate partner violence, um, sexual abuse, substance abuse, uh, unresolved loss, either either immediate or um, or distant unresolved loss can also be a contributor. And as I mentioned before, we're really seeing that coronavirus, I think, is a significant contributor that we're seeing the impact of more and more. Unplanned and unwanted pregnancies are also a risk factor for PMADs. Um, and traumatic births or NICU experience is also a PMAD risk factor. Um, the way that I see it is kind of like, uh, I always have the the image of Lego, or not Lego, but Tetris blocks, just to age myself a little bit in terms of, in terms of um, computer games, Tetris, um, where you have blocks kind of falling and, you know, one's job is to kind of move the blocks and make sure that they don't stack kind of on top of each other, because as they stack on top of each other, you're kind of, that's when you're going to lose. Um, and I kind of see some of these risk factors are, are things like traumatic birth, um, stressful events, uh, history of mental illness as being these blocks that stack on top of each other rather than stack kind of beside each other. And in a time of, of global stress, um, it's, we have even less time and bandwidth to, to, to kind of lay these out flatly and they do have a tendency to build. And so we do think that this is an increased risk uh, for that reason. Now I'm gonna, um, we're gonna kind of transition over to let you know a little bit about what we do at the Motherhood Center and how we transitioned our program into a virtual day program. So uh, Meredith is gonna share that with you. Thanks, Dr. Polanya. And again, thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the virtual day program. Um, so as Dr. Polanya mentioned, um, as we at the Motherhood Center, um, really we're monitoring the COVID situation and, and um, as it evolved, we worked, um, you know, as she said, to really develop an appropriate response therapeutically and clinically, um, not just for the moms in our program, currently in our program, but also to ensure ongoing access to treatment, which is, as we know, um, and just talked about is one of the barriers for, for moms really getting what they need is the scarcity of, of availability. So, so we all put our heads together and really worked hard to develop um, what became and is now the virtual day program. So the, teri, the teleperinatal PHP um, provides a high quality and intensive treatment for women experiencing acute symptoms um, of some of the, the, um, the diagnoses that Dr. Polanya reviewed. Um, we launched our program on the 16th of March, so we're starting week five. Um, and you know, both staff and, and mom feedback has been um, really positive and that it's really important that um, we continue to get that feedback both from, from the people running the program, but also from the moms participating and we've continued to hone um, and really develop um, how we run the program to match this virtual platform um, to increase ease and efficacy. Um, as a staff, I've, I've been at the Motherhood Center since shortly after we opened, and as a staff, one thing that's always been the case is we work really hard to make, um, make treatment accessible um, for each individual family and mom, and that's something we continue to do in this virtual platform um, to ensure each mom gets what she needs. We're working really diligently to remove cost as a barrier. So um, for anybody thinking it might be something that's out of their reach, I just encourage you to, to, speak, with, to speak with the staff about, about your family's financial picture. Um, and as always, we prioritize um, confidentiality and privacy. So we're doing the tele uh, perinatal program through Zoom, which is a HIPAA compliant platform and allows us to continue prioritizing those. 
So the virtual day program, um, really um, in thinking about the kind of the components of the program, um, there's, there's um, three aspects that really um, sort of encompass our treatment. And, and that's, um, you know, the first is treatment, the second is community, and the third is structure. And so treatment really um, is, is focused on three areas, which is skill development for moms in the program. One thing that's really become clear um, doing this work uh, is that the coping strategies or the skills that moms relied on prior to um, prior to motherhood, either um, you know transitioning to motherhood for the first time, or even each additional child that might be added to the family, the the coping strategies and the things that are developed that people rely on to manage both symptoms and stressors may not be available in the same way. So it's a really important uh, part of the program that we support moms in developing you know more current effective skills that they can use when facing um, symptoms and stressors. Dyadic interventions are a, a huge part of the program um, to increase and address any bonding or attachment um, issues that may be arriving. And we integrate that both in groups and individually in our sessions with moms. Medication management is also a big piece of the program to mitigate um, the acute symptoms that moms might be experiencing. And so each mom, um, part of her treatment team is both an individual therapist and a psychiatrist, um, a reproductive psychiatrist to specialize um, in treating those acute symptoms. So the, the um, a lot of times we get questions about, um, you know, what are the symptoms? Um, you know, I think everybody has this sort of classic version of postpartum depression. And as Dr. Polanya mentioned, um, it's really perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. And so, it, as we know, it's both in pregnancy and postpartum. Here are some of the common symptoms um, that may occur. And often when I'm talking with moms and families about these symptoms, I really like to highlight that it's not just the presence or absence of these symptoms, but how much uh, of the symptom is present. So how severe is it or how bad is a mom feeling? How often are these symptoms present? So, you know, a, a, a few uh, moments of tearfulness does not necessarily equate to a PMAD, but frequency or how often somebody is experiencing something is really one of the ways in which we help to determine um, a PMAD. And then the last is how much are any of these getting in the way of doing the things both that you enjoy or that, um, that you expected to do during this time? So, caring for baby. Um, you know, uh, it's pretty hard to shower generally in the postpartum time, but if that's something that um, you're finding is not, um, you know, you're not interested in or not able to do as much, that's certainly another way we look at it. The main goals of the, um, of the virtual day program are really to support um, moms in decreasing um, the acuity of symptoms. So the intensity of symptoms, you know, so often I'll do this with moms. So it's both to bring down the intensity of symptoms and to bring up the ability for a mom to manage symptoms. Um, so we address, um, uh, through treatment, we address acute symptoms that might pose a safety risk. So um, addressing any issues of, uh, that may emerge in terms of a mom having thoughts of hurting herself or anyone else. Those are always the primary first um, point of intervention if that's uh, present for a mom. We also work really diligently to prevent um, a mom having to go to a higher level of care, which can result in the separation of mom from her baby. Um, and one of, the, one of the things that we value so much is, the, is keeping mom and baby together and believe strongly that that's such an important part of treatment. And so another, uh, that's another really important goal of the program. We, offer, we also offer a step down in care for any mom who, who has um, had to um, have a, a stay in inpatient hospitalization and really support stepping down to a lower um, but still quite supportive level of care. Um, as I mentioned, a really strong goal is to um, reduce the symptoms, but also to return a mom to a level of functioning that, um, that is adequate both for herself and for her family. And again, to increase coping skills, to address bonding and attachment impairment that may occur between mom and baby. 
Um, something to keep in mind is uh, in, when thinking about a PNAD is that impairment is often perceived as um, you know, not wanting to be with baby, which is um, certainly something that can happen, but it can also look like um, only wanting to care for baby and not really feeling comfortable letting others care for the baby as well. Um, additionally, sometimes we have moms that, um, that sort of aren't sure if they're experiencing a PNAD because they're they're feeling bonded and attached to the baby. And that's, um, you know, though that can certainly be a big part of the constellation of symptoms, may not, it does not rule out uh, PMAD if you're feeling bonded um, to your child. Meredith, I just wanted to ask a quick question. You know, sure. I think so many of our listeners are probably way more familiar with the more traditional level of care, like in an outpatient setting, right? Where you see your therapist once a week and you meet with your psychiatrist once a month or more frequently or less frequently. Um, is it fair to say that because of the comprehensive nature of the day program, that women, because of all the support they're receiving, tend to feel better faster? Yeah, that's so great. That's such a great question. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, that, absolutely. So just to step back and thanks for the reminder to explain sort of where we fall in the levels of treatment as I'm going through this slide. Um, outpatient care um, is something most people are familiar with, and that's typically your once to twice a week session with an outpatient therapist or um, psychiatrist. Um, and then other people, the other level of services in patient care, which is referenced on this slide. And then we sort of fall in between um, those two. So we're kind of that middle level of care where outpatient um, once or twice a week with your therapist is not quite enough to hold you. So a mom might be experiencing considerable distress in between sessions that feels really hard to manage and it's overwhelming. And that's where we step in. And so um, sometimes I'll, I'll do an equation um, with folks that our day program is every day for five groups a day, um, which over the course of one week is about 25 groups. And so to answer your question, Paige, it's about half a year of outpatient once a week treatment. And so that allows us to really concentrate treatment in a different way and um, support moms in, in resolving symptoms much faster. So the virtual day program, the, the word comprehensive comes to mind too. So the core of our program is a group format, which as I just said, um, is five groups a day, five days a week. Um, one of the things I mentioned earlier that that really provides in addition to treatment is a, is a real sense of structure. Um, and so in times of what feels like and is um, chaotic, routine and predictability and structure really add a therapeutic component to the treatment. So um, knowing every morning we have the same group where we check in with each other really helps to add um, a sense of, of holding. Um, and that structure really supports kind of the reduction of symptoms. And so, um, as I mentioned, group is the core component of our program. Um, and so here you have just a couple of examples of the, of the different modalities of therapy that occur within those groups. So morning, um, so interpersonal psychotherapy is um, often uh, the morning group where we're, we're checking in with, with moms about, um, you know, sometimes really concretely how the night was, but also um, more, um, uh, more globally, what's it like to transition to motherhood and talking about just the, the emotional experience and the, the practical day-to-day um, -day as well. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy and dialectical behavioral therapy are the two models of therapy that we draw on most strongly for our skills group and really use those, um, use those modalities to support that developing of the toolbox um, that moms can draw on in times of distress. Um, we support moms both in developing short-term coping skills, so things to have in their back pocket um, in moments of high distress, but also long-term coping skills. So developing um, ways to think about themselves in this role of mother um, as they're developing it, or again, even adding um, family members to, to the picnic table um, in thinking about sort of how they see themselves in motherhood. Um, restorative movement and art therapy are sort of, we, um, we call them sort of our expressive therapies. And, and I have found, um, you know, these are certainly groups that have been part of our brick and mortar program as well, but have taken on this really unique 
role in our uh, virtual day program. Um, given that we're all in front of screens a lot more, we have found movement therapy to be such a vital part of the program to really get um, moms moving. And um, uh, which as we know, like really helps the sense of um, movement and being able to um, not feel so stagnant is, is supportive of both managing symptoms and ongoing, um, ongoing healing. Art therapy um, is both um, quite a therapeutic group, but also has really come to, to be a time where moms can um, use art to, to really um, support the processing of this transition to motherhood, but also it's become a time of real engagement with other moms and, and an opportunity to sort of share whatever project they're working on, but also a little bit more about themselves. So it's taken on this additional time to connect with with moms in the program in a different way. Um, dyadic therapy, as I mentioned earlier, is also uh, a, part of, a big part of the program and really focused on supporting um, mother-baby attachment and having the opportunity to interact um, both on the screen with your baby and other moms, but also um, in, in your own homes with moms and really an opportunity to both do that really um, in the moments of the group and then also explore this process of transitioning to motherhood. Partner Support Group um, is another offering that was uh, translated from the brick and mortar and is now offered virtually. This is an opportunity for, um, for partners to um, to meet with Paige, with a staff member, to really um, have a space for them to learn a little bit more about what's going on for their partner um, and also how to support them more fully. Um, it's also an opportunity for partners to connect with each other just about this common experience um, that they're having and really has served um, much in the way that the, that the group does for moms to sort of um, to connect people with a sense of community. And I realize that's one piece um, of the three I mentioned earlier that I hadn't addressed yet. Um, so in addition to the clinical interventions and the structure of the program, a very big piece of this program is a sense of community right now. And I know speaking from my own experience, I'm craving that more and more as we're, as we're all in this space um, virtually longer. And so one thing that's always been true for the program, both in person and certainly now virtually, is this sense of community, um, the sense that moms are not alone in this, um, which really challenges the, the sense of isolation and disconnection and fracturing that we're all feeling. Um, and in that, um, the validation and support that is offered amongst each other. You know, this PMANS comes with such a sense of um, guilt and, um, and sort of this idea that, that there's something wrong with with each individual mom experiencing symptoms. And so being able to, to, um, to share um, what's going on for each mom and have it met by other group members that might know how they feel and connect on that level, but other moms may not know how they feel and are connecting um, and offering validation. So um, not necessarily just knowing how you feel, but also um, being able to share how you're feeling and have that met with acceptance and support. Um, is also a really, a really vital part of the program. So in addition to the core um, group therapy, we also in the virtual day program offer comprehensive treatments um, for each person um, that, that joins our program. So um, that includes a psychiatric evaluation and psychosocial assessment. So that's really our opportunity to, to learn as much as we can about each mom. Um, and her story, which really helps us craft as, as, um, as full a picture of what's going on, um, which informs our, our treatment interventions. A treatment plan that's collaborative. Um, we care what mom's goals are, and so really want to prioritize the things that they would like to focus on in treatment as well. Safety planning and um, coping skill development, as I mentioned earlier, um, as well as medication management sessions and individual therapy. So each mom that joins the program is, um, is assigned a treatment team, which includes a clinician and, um, and a reproductive psychiatrist. Um, and, and so um, in addition to, to the group therapy, you'll meet, uh, any mom would meet weekly um, with those providers. In addition to that, family sessions are offered um, anywhere from, any, depending on the, the, the 
picture for each individual family sessions with family members. Um, so not just partners. I've had family sessions with moms. Um, I've had family sessions with entire families together. So we're pretty creative when it comes to family sessions, but you know, similar to partners group, it's an opportunity to meet with your providers to talk about what's going on and to figure out ways to increase support and educate family members about um, about PMAD specifically so they have a, a broader understanding of the experience for moms. Um, we collaborate with previous providers um, ongoing as needed to really again make treatment as comprehensive as possible. One thing I haven't mentioned um, thus far is our virtual nursery support services. Um, this was also in brick and mortar and it's been really um, cool to see the evolution of this, uh, this service um, over the virtual platform. So we offer virtual nursery services to help um, moms um, explore uh, their individual baby care questions or needs, um, anything from sleep to eating to um, how to swaddle, how to baby carry, anything that a mom has a question about um, is certainly game in the virtual nursery services. And also I think um, beyond that to really help each mom develop the confidence um, in herself and her own mothering that that is so vital to this process. Additionally, we offer, offer an after hours warm line support. Um, as I mentioned, weekly partners group. And then uh, as it um, comes time for each mom to, to return back to uh, the level of care of outpatient, we work um, to plan the most appropriate timeline and, and treatment plan possible. Um, I think I mentioned a little bit about the virtual nursery and the day program, um, but I do wanna highlight that um, you know, this is both, um, in some ways, this taking care of mom. Moms often come to us and say, like, I can't do this because I, I really, I don't have time or it's my larger family is the priority or there's just no way I can do this. And I think one thing um, we try really hard to communicate to moms is that taking care of themselves is taking care of their baby. Um, and having space in the, in the center to both attend to care for themselves, but also to attend to care for their baby and for the relationship um, is part of the process. Um, we know that um, that dyadic therapy, um, and so that part of the program that really supports um, attending to attachment and bonding is well-researched and, um, and isn't just um, an intervention that impacts now, right? Certainly um, it's something that's gonna support attachment and bonding right now, but that also has long lasting impacts on um, the family and the relationships in the future. And um, so we work really hard to, to make sure that those interventions we're doing are targeted and supportive of the entire family. I thought we could end with just um, looking at some of the testimonials or some of the quotes from moms that have been through the program. Um, I, I think all of us at the Motherhood Center feel really um, lucky to do this work. And it's certainly in, in the reflections of previous patients that um, um, that, that sense of, of feeling that I get to do this work really comes through. Um, and so just wanted an opportunity to share those with you guys. So I can read them. Thanks. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for a safe place to feel heard and supported and recover. The Motherhood Center has given me my life back. This is truly a special place. Thank you for being, thank you for being certain I would get better even when I didn't believe it. I am so grateful that you started this program, which has not only helped me, but I know will help countless other women in the future. I'm so relieved to be feeling better and really can't thank you enough. Being with other mothers struggling and feeling not alone was a huge turning point for me. The community of women there made me feel strong and secure. I left there with so much knowledge and understanding of self-care. Meredith, before we move on, um, I've, I've heard, and, and I'm sure you have too, um, so many women who kind of refer to the blur of the transition to motherhood, especially in the first few weeks and months as like a groundhog's day in some regards, right? You know, it's like the same thing over and over, this redundancy, especially in the time of coronavirus. So many women will say, I don't know when day begins and night ends, or it's just a blur. Something you touched on earlier that I think is so important is that sense of structure. 
um, that women who are attending the day program have. They have that block of, block of time, Monday through Friday. They know what to anticipate. There's a regularity to it. There's a, there's a comfort to knowing what's to come in a period of time that feels so uncertain. Um, and so if there's anything else that, that you want to say about that, perhaps some of the responses that, that you've been getting or the feedback from women that, that are experiencing that structure in the virtual day program. Yeah, thanks for the question. So the, the day is designed to, to start at 10 o'clock and end at three and built into that are different groups, um, which uh, though um, the, there are different groups throughout the day, the week is uniform in that each day the, group, uh, the groups are the same. Um, and so um, the, the structure, though there's changing groups throughout the day, the structure really helps ground um, ground each mom um, and um, provide an opportunity to, um, to to connect with other women throughout a time which might otherwise be spent um, not knowing what to do or not having much much um, much to attend to other than the baby. Um, one of the things that I think uh, is surprising to hear from moms, or I'm always just kind of tickled by, is um, is just kind of really appreciating, uh, you know, the structure, appreciating having kind of a, a block of time that feels substantial where they can kind of speak in complete sentences and focus on something other than the mundane tasks of in front of them um, and where they can kind of uh, feel validated and heard in their experience. Um, and so, yes, the, the connection but the, the structure of just having kind of like a chunk out of the day, I, you know, I can't tell you how many women I've worked with who have said like, you know, I wake up in the morning knowing that I have 16 hours ahead of me. And, um, and in the setting of a PMAT, it can feel like a really sinking kind of a feeling. And so one of the things that I think the, uh, the day program provides is, you know, kind of a significant chunk of time that, you know, that is the same every day um, that allows women a space to, um, you know, to, to work on themselves during this, uh, during this big transition. And in some instances, Dr. Polonia, uh, there's been some barriers that have been removed to access treatment and care in the virtual day program as well, right? I mean, it's, it's in some instances easier to participate without having to navigate the New York City MTA train situation and some of the hurdles that we in New York City experience just getting out the door, yeah. I would imagine that, that, that it's, even, it's even more accessible in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think that is one other thing that I've noticed, I'm kind of straddling some of, seeing some of the women come in for evaluations is that um, they're kind of more readily um, open to the idea of being able to do this from home um, and being able to have something that kind of comes to them. Yeah. One thing I was going to add to that was um, was both what you were saying earlier, Dr. Polanya, about having um, a chunk of time. A lot of times moms experiencing PMA talk about watching the clock and, and how minutes often are experienced like hours and having um, not, you know, both the distraction, but the clinically and therapeutic um, work that occurs um, really helps that day um, feel less daunting. Um, and that, yes, that some of the barriers to getting to the program have, that have often been cited by moms are not really being able to wrap their mind around traveling to the program every day. Um, and so um, having the opportunity to experience the program in their own, in the comforts of their own home really removes that barrier. Um, and also really provides an opportunity to practice some of the skills that they're learning in a much more um, immediate way than we have sometimes seen in the brick and mortar. So even those of us in the program, um, um, you know, as staff are kind of taking that in and, and thinking about how to, how to make use of the fact that moms are at home so that they can have more of those opportunities. Yeah, I think that's a really, um, that's a really important point. And one of the things that we have seen even in the past few days are, you know, vivid examples of 
of, you know, some of the moms commenting or learning from other moms and their, and watching them kind of in their, in their environment, being able to kind of see them dealing with multiple children and pets or, you know, not muting their, their, their line when they're kind of having an interaction with their spouse um, and being able to kind of turn back to the group and get support around that. Um, but also being able to kind of model, you know, both the rising to the challenge of incorporating skills in the, in their lives, but also kind of, you know, getting support, you know, perhaps not always being able to do that and kind of being able to help each other with that. So I think, ooh, sorry. So some of the other offerings um, at the Motherhood Center is gonna turn it over to Paige, um, having um, finished talking about the, the virtual PHP. Yes, so as we had spoken about, and Meredith, you did such a great job of explaining a little bit earlier, there are these different levels of care. So going from the top down, you know, there's inpatient in the most acute and severe cases, there's the virtual day program, which is that middle ground, and then there's outpatient. Uh, and the Motherhood Center has always and continues to provide outpatient treatment. So that looks like individual therapy, uh, and it also looks like medication management. So we are lucky to be staffed with some of the most seasoned leading psychologists, social workers, MDs in the field of reprodu reproductive psychiatry, uh, and all of these clinicians are available in an outpatient setting. And so whereas previously people would come to the office in our bricks and mortar location to be able to meet weekly for therapy or with a reproductive psychiatrist, we're offering all of that virtually now. The other thing that we do a lot of is trying to conceive consultations. So women that are interested in becoming pregnant that might be on medication and are, are curious to know what's safe to continue taking or discontinue taking during pregnancy. Uh, we also do initial consults to help women figure out what's the best option for them as they're thinking about conception. Historically, in our bricks and mortar location, um, we have offered support groups. And one of the support groups that's really gained a lot of traction is our PMAD support group for new and expecting moms. Uh, and because that was such a popular space, again, for women to come and find a sense of community, get some basic skills to learn how to tolerate and, and navigate anxiety, depression, and other things, uh, we moved that over virtually as well. And in seeing that with everything that new and expecting moms are kind of grappling with in this, in this day and age of coronavirus and isolation, also started to see other needs that were developing in the perinatal population. Uh, in the past, as Meredith had mentioned, we do offer a partner support group for partners of women that are in the day program. We have now, we now offer and have added to our menu of options in, in support groups an open partners and dads support group. So for women uh, who have partners in our OP or, or any of our other support groups or just partners and dads in general that are having a hard time navigating this time or looking for a sense of community to connect with other dads and partners about the transition to parenthood, fatherhood, that partners support group just started this week and, and meets every other week and is available to, to dads and partners looking for support. Another thing that we have noticed is has been a real struggle for people during this time and beyond is sleep. Uh, and so we have a specialist uh, on board that specializes in CBTI, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia. And that's going to be starting next week and is a great way for women to receive some concrete skills on how to improve their sleep. Uh, we also start this week a pregnancy during the time of COVID-19 support group led by another one of our social workers. A great place for women that are pregnant right now, feeling super isolated and alone, having a lot of understandable anxieties about what the birthing process, delivery, and the immediate postpartum period is going to look like considering all the changes in the hospital system right now. Uh, that's a great opportunity for pregnant women looking for support. 
Uh, we also offer a miscarriage and loss support group with a local group here, um, Pregnancy Loss Support Program in New York City. Uh, I think we have one more of those support groups coming up uh, in the month of May, and then we'll be offering a new round on a monthly basis. And then an uh, uh, offering that we, again, had offered in Brooks and Mortar and are so thankful that this is now virtual is supporting healthy relationships for couples. This is traditionally a 12-week series, again, now virtual in the evening hours once a week, so ultimately after kids' babies are asleep, a time for couples to really gain the skills and again, establish a sense of community with other couples to learn how to navigate this really challenging time of parenthood. Um, because as, as any of you who are listening know, that transition also has an impact on the relationship of the couple. Uh, and so it's a, it's a great way to learn how to strengthen that relationship, communication, and a number of skills for, for couples. And then we've been really listening to the concerns that are coming in, you know, via phone, email, different types of aspects of things that are happening right now that, that women are struggling with. And so we've started a whole new webinar series and we're trying to do one or two webinars a week to really get into those specific questions and concerns that new and expecting moms are having. Uh, all of these webinars are uh, available. We can, you can sign up online. If for some reason you missed one of these webinars, they do live on the website. You can always go back and watch it later, similar to this webinar. So managing anxiety in the time of coronavirus, um, navigating pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum, navigating relationships. Uh, today we're doing our virtual day program open house. And we have a couple of others coming up. This Friday, we've got sleep strategies for mom and baby during times of high anxiety. Uh, next week, we've got raising kids at home in the time of coronavirus uh, with special attention to parents that uh, are parents to children with special needs, and then infertility in the time of coronavirus. And I always like to share this slide when we're talking about the efficacy of the day program. I'm gonna jump back to our virtual day program. One of the instruments that we use to determine the level of acuity for a newer expecting mom who has PMAD symptoms is something called the EPDS, the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale. And on average, um, we have learned that by using the ED EPDS as a measurement, it's able to tell us the immense decrease in symptoms that women experience from the beginning of treatment till the end. So we administer the EPDS on the first day of the day program and then on the day of discharge. So the last day when a woman is discharging from the program. And on average, we see about a 20.6 on the first day. And just so you know, the highest score uh, that a woman um, can receive on the EPDS is a 30. And then on the last day, we're seeing a 7.6, um, right around there, a little bit lower sometimes, that really shows such a marked improvement in acuity. We're also starting to integrate other instruments to be able to uh, tell us the, the efficacy of the program. But the EPDS, um, and, and this slide in particular, really shows us when we talk about you know, feeling better faster, um, this is a really good indication of the, of the effectiveness of the day program. And then just for nostalgia's sake, mm -hmm. uh, we will not be in this place to get all, forever. We will make it to the other side and we will return back to the bricks and mortar location of the motherhood center. Um, and we'll probably do bricks and mortar and virtual because this has been such a successful experience. And also wanna say, you know, because of, of the anxiety that this is causing and will continue to cause a lot of families, there's going to be a continued need. And so we, we are ready to rise to the occasion. And if that means it's a combination of virtual support and also bricks and mortar, we know how to do both now, which is great. Um, so just a couple of, of pictures to show you what we look like uh, when we're in our office space. Uh, picture to the left is, is a picture of our waiting area, and then the picture to the right uh, is an office space, and then it gives you a sense of the hallway where all of our clinicians' offices are to the left of. And this is our day program room, which we, we look at longingly. Um, this is where the magic happened. Used to, that when we were in our space and now continues to happen on a virtual platform. Uh, and so as you can see, we've got really 
cozy chairs that recline and rock for new and expecting moms and baby toys and a really nice, warm, comforting uh, living room-like environment. That's really what we were going for when, when we designed the space. And then the favorite photo uh, of the nursery. This is where our nursery director, um, who's a baby whisperer, where the magic happens. Uh, and as Meredith mentioned earlier, her expertise in care continues on in the virtual platform and she's available to meet with our new and expecting moms and answer all kinds of questions about baby care. So we just wanted to thank everybody for listening. Um, as we start to wrap up, I want to uh, ask anybody if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the chat. Uh, and, and we'd be happy to answer your questions. Just want to encourage all of you, uh, if you or someone you know might be experiencing a PMAD uh, and you're not sure if you need treatment or you don't, just give us a call. Uh, and we'll help you make that determination. It's, it's very simple. You can call us at the number listed right there, 212-335-0034, or you can visit us uh, via the website and learn much more about everything that we've discussed today. That's at www.themotherhoodcenter, all one word, dot com. So, one more ask if anybody has any questions now's a great time to put that in the chat and if we don't have any questions i just really want to thank dr polonia and meredith um, these two ladies played a critical critical role in creating the virtual day program and making it what it is and and continuing the magic um, from a bricks and mortar space to a virtual space. So thank you both so much for doing this today, describing the program so clearly. Uh, and uh, again, anybody has any questions, give us a call, know we're here. Know that if you are struggling, you're not alone. Uh, and that with treatment, people feel better. Uh, and, and we're here to help you through a challenging time if that's the space that you're in. All right, everybody, thank you so much. It, it really was a pleasure to have you. And just a thank reminder, you. this will live on the website if anybody wants to watch it after the fact. Thank you very thank you much. All. Be well. Thank you.